All right, this is an interview at the New York State Military Museum, Saratoga Springs, New York. It is the 4th of March, 2007, approximately 1 p.m. Interviewers, interviewer is Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, Edward D. Bushy, Sr., uh, Hudson Falls, New York, October 17, 1928. Okay. What was your educational background prior to entering the service? Uh, two years of high school. Mm -hmm. Why did you enlist or were you drafted? I enlisted. Why did you decide to enlist? Yeah, I thought I would like to service, um, so I figured I'd try that. Mm -hmm. And I get the. Uh, I enlisted for three years, and I got. Yeah, pretty near four. Mm -hmm. As in three of the day that I was leaving, that I was supposed to get discharged. Um, why did you pick the army? Well, for some reason or another, I I thought that uh, well, I enli really I enlisted for the first cavalry, which was in Japan. I enlisted for three years, but I I didn't get in it until uh, Korean War. I got in it in Korea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, when when did you enlist? July 20th, 1948. Okay. Um, where did you go for your basic training? Uh, Fort Dick, New Jersey. How long were you there? Well, actually I guess I was there probably 16 or 18 weeks because I went to a clerk type of school after basic and then I was transferred. Okay. Um, where did you go after, did you have your basic there also? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Infantry basic. training? Yeah, and then I went, went to uh, Fort Devens, Massachusetts, and uh, I was in a heavy weapons company. <clears throat> oh, that's quite a change from clerk school. Clerk typist, oh, yeah. they put you in a heavy weapons unit. Yeah, I... Um, what what were some of the heavy weapons that you worked with? Uh, 75 recoil, recoil rifle. Alright. Is that what uh, you yeah. went to, when you went to Korea that you were with a recoilless rifle unit? Yeah, heavy, heavy weapons. Uh, heavy weapons. Uh, uh, first cavalry, uh, uh, eighth cavalry, they didn't have any third, uh, third, uh, company, so that, or 3rd Battalion actually I should say, so I mean we were the 3rd Battalion. Mm -hmm. That's what. Mm -hmm. what did you do between 1948 and 1950 when the war started? Well, in the summertime, one summer we went down to uh, Camp Edwards, Massachusetts. We trained the National Guard and Reserve in the summer, and in the wintertime we went back to Fort Devens. And the next year we went to uh, well, it was Pine Camp then, but I can't go now. We went up here and, uh, well, we were there probably, probably four weeks when the Korean War broke out. Mm -hmm. So then they shipped us right back and put us on a troop train. Then we went. Right now, what there. unit were you in at that point? I was in, uh, <clears throat> see, it was the 7th Infantry Division in Fort Devens. Okay. Um, so was your whole unit sent out uh, by train or? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you end up in the first cab? Well, it, uh, like I say, they didn't have no uh, no third uh, battalion, so that's really the third battalion. Okay, so uh, they needed another battalion kind yeah. of to beef up the unit? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Where did you land when you went into Korea? Uh, Busan. Okay, so this this is when they were pushed back into that pocket. Yeah, they were putting their back all the way down. Yeah. Um, when when did you get into Korea? Uh, it was August 9th, nineteen fifty. What was it like when when you landed there? Oh, I couldn't believe it when I opened my eyes in the morning and saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, but uh, they say now it's a whole lot different. It's, mm -hmm. 
I mean, everything to all build up again, but no, it was uh, all just uh, you know, mud hut and all that, you know. Was, Were you put right into the front lines? Yeah, I went up about a week after I got there, up and right up on the front lines. Mm -hmm. How did you feel your first combat? Yeah, kind of shaky when the first shells hit the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I was lucky. I never got hit. Come, come, go, go to it a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Now, where was your recordless rifle? Did you set it up on a tripod or? Yeah, they did. Uh, with a, yeah, when they went up with a rifle, rifle companies up on the front line, they did. Mm -hmm. But then they also mounted them on uh, trucks, and a lot mm -hmm. of times they done uh, road patrols. Mm -hmm. So you went on road patrols also with, yeah, with your right. weapon? Yeah. Now, how many were there assigned to, to one of the recoilless rifles? Uh, I'd have to say roughly seven, probably. I'm not exactly sure on that. But. Okay. Um, how did you, how did that work as a weapon? Uh, did you like being in a, a unit like that? Oh yeah, yeah, it worked very well. Um, did you ever carry a sidearm or have a rifle with you also? Yeah, M1. M1, okay. Um, what was most of your, your duty like in uh, this unit? Well, we uh, they used to get prepared to move from place to place quite a lot. You know, mm -hmm. even after they started moving up. and. Uh, after they went, went started, they went pretty fast. But. Now, were you on the Inchon landings? No. Or did you just no. ended up in... So you moved, did you move up the coast then? Yeah, well, yeah, we met the... Uh, yeah, first call, we met the uh, 7th Division uh, at Inchon. I mean, they, in fact, uh, went up to on a, on a patrol, on a, Right side of the road, there were uh, two North Korean tanks, and why they didn't shoot at us, I never know. But after we met the Seventh Division, and we were coming back down, there were two tanks in the road. The planes came in and knocked two tanks out there, right in the road. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the North Koreans were all dead. But I mean, <laughs> they—I uh, don't know. I, it's like I say, I don't know why that they didn't even fire at us. I don't, don't understand that part. But they must have been sleeping, I guess. <laughs> Been lucky for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, now, uh, you ended up, did you go all the way up the coast then to the Yellow River? Yes, up to Unsan. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chosan River was over on this side and mm -hmm. over on this side. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you were there in the winter also? Oh, yeah. What kind of gear did you have? Well, we had a shelter half and a sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, we had winter clothes, but, mm -hmm. but we just, most of the time, we just sleep right on, put the shelter half down, lay around top of the snowbank. That was it. Mm -hmm. Because they were moving all over. They were, and they said it was, comes up at 42 below zero. But, I mean, it, of course, you're out in it night and day. It was mm -hmm. Did you ever fr suffer from frostbite at all? No, I was lucky with that, too. I didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How'd you keep your feet from freezing up? Did you have extra socks? And yeah, we had heavy socks, but I was I was lucky. My feet never never froze, but it was uh, it was cold enough to freeze. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Do you ever have trouble with your weapons operating with it being so cold? No, no. I had one one time that uh, the one I had I thought was kind of old and I. Saw one on the ground one day and I picked it up. And one, one day you had to test fire it and it'd go bang and you'd have to pull the thing back again to so get rid of that. <laughs> now, um, what happened when you were up near the Yalu River? Did you, what was it like when well, you. Well, we were, uh, that day they gave us a sleeping bag. They said, don't lose them, you don't get any more. And uh, then uh, where we were at, the artillery, they were 
fired at pretty near level. I mean, it was firing close. And and about midnight, they said, well, they're going to move out. So we went down the road, and uh, they had a, there was a machine gun on this side, and there's one on the hill up on the right side, and there was a tank coming down too, and trucks, and they were wounded at them, and they were crying. And uh, I had been down there on a patrol that day to, to the road that went that way, and uh, they they had it blocked. I mean, they they uh, uh, tanks and that they didn't make it down through, but uh, we were there by the intersection there, and uh, they heard the bugles and said, "Hold your fire, to British." And the next thing they said, it's uh, they said it's uh, Chinese. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, oh, you're surrounded. So uh, I was one of the lucky ones that I got out. But uh, they lost over a thousand that night. And of course, a lot of them were captured. And all of them weren't, weren't killed, but I mean, a lot of them were captured. But because uh, I knew one, one guy, guy from Corinth, he was a prisoner for 33 months, I think. They didn't use them very well. Mm -hmm. How how were you able to get out of the encirclement? Well, I, we walked right up over the, the hill where the machine gun was on the right. I don't know, evidently the tanks must have knocked it out because it wasn't there when over that hill. Mm -hmm. And then we walked down too, and then by morning we get back to the back to the other units. But, but they were uh, scattered all over. That in that book there, several days, there's quite a few of them. Uh, and I had a, a friend of mine from Tennessee call me after 44 years, and he said that uh, it was 35 or 40 of them with him. Then uh, said they they killed them all, but him they thought he was dead, and all you know, he had was his pants, and he walked four or five nights, and he got out. He was wounded, but he got out. Now this is, you mentioned his name was William Cole? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh... Did you know, did you think he was killed, or did no, you I not know? I didn't, didn't know. So no. how did how he contact you after 44 years? Well, I, uh, bought the First Calvary Association, when you join it, they put the, put your name in the paper. Mm -hmm. So he wrote out there and he got my phone address and phone number. And then he called me. In fact, I, uh, about... Uh, probably 12 years ago, I, he was coming up to Watertown to look for another guy, and uh, I went out there and I met him, him and his family, and uh, someday hopefully I'd go down and see him. But, uh, Where does he live in Tennessee? Hamp Hampton, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. okay. um, how long were you in continuous action during this this fall back from the Yellow River. Well, we, well, they started drawing back pretty quick, quickly after this uh, combat. There, they had started going back, back toward the 38th parallel again. Mm -hmm. Was there fighting almost every single day? Would you say? Oh yeah, yeah. There was the artillery there. You hear all day long, going there, 24 hours a day, going there over your head. Mm -hmm. Now, did you abandon your recordless rifle, or were you carrying it with you? And, no, that, that was gone. That was you captured. Know, I imagine. Yeah. Um, how did you keep supplied with food? Were you pretty well supplied with food, or? Oh yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah, we were pretty well supplied. I mean, we did go hungry. We had a lot of always had a lot of canned stuff. You know, mm -hmm. kind of get used to it after a while. Were you ever, I, I know I've read articles about it, were you ever able to bathe or change your uniform or anything well, during that time? See, well, yeah, one time, I think it was, I don't know, it was two or three months, and they finally they bought up the tent, the portable showers, and they had showers, and then we used to bathe in the river sometime. Mm -hmm. you know. Were you ever able to change your uniform much during this retreat time at, at all? Well, some, but not not a lot. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. but they 
they try to keep you clean, you know what I mean? Yeah. How long did the retreat last? Approximately. Yeah, uh, I know, I'd say approximately probably three months, roughly. I don't mm -hmm. remember exactly, but. When you reach the uh, 38th parallel, is that where you set up a defensive position? Yeah, they set it up, but they were pushed back further again. Mm -hmm. they were pushed back below that, back down below the sole. Mm -hmm. Then they step back up again and get up to the 38th parallel. Now, how long were you in Korea? 11 months. I left uh, July 20th, and that was the day I was supposed to have got discharged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that took me a year of extension, but I, get, I got out in, I think, three years and nine months. You know, you said one of the things that uh, you remembered was about a sergeant telling one of the men he was going to be hit first. Well, yeah, we had a, on the ship, we had this section sergeant used to say to this one guy, he's always, always doing something, he says, he says, I hope that, uh, kept telling him all the way over, I hope you're the first one to get, I hope you're the first one to get hit. The first night went up on the line, he was the first one that got hit. He was a sergeant. <laughs> he didn't get killed. <laughs> now you said one thing that made an impression on you were the Korean children. Yeah, oh yeah, they, they enjoyed the candy. Mm -hmm. you know, we used to get candy all the time. Uh, they, you know, they flock around like they do them everywhere else. I mean, they, they enjoyed the candy. Mm -hmm. Did you have much contact with the Korean people themselves? Or? Uh, yeah, we had, um, and we had some Koreans that were with us that was, they used them for different things like KP and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, on the front line, didn't have much KP because all you had was just canned food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, now, during most of the time, did you live in tents? Were you in tents? Uh, no, I very seldom ever get to put them up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I stay one place long enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you never were there then when they were digging the, the trenches and the bunkers that much then, were you? You, you were more moving. Yeah, we, didn't move, we were moving more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it was a little later they were yeah. into all the trenches and so on. Um, <clears throat> now you said that you, re I noticed you got a, a bronze star with V. What? How did you get the bronze star? Well, uh, we were under fire. I I think it was tank shells, what it sounded like. I mean, of course, the artillery shells are a different sound. And uh, wonder you know, really don't hit them, though. Just about hit the ground here, plunk, and that's it. But mm -hmm. uh, I think they were a tank, but there was uh, ammunition in the building, and uh, we had uh, workers take take it and, uh, take it away, take it out of the building. And, uh, now I noticed from a newspaper article you didn't get you had to wait for it for a little while. Uh, yeah, I. I had one in uh, Korea, but it didn't have the V on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to the VA, and they kept sending they sent them back without the V. So I I wrote a letter to Jerry Solomon. It was only about two weeks he had it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, could you just hold this up in front of you, and uh, Eric can maybe focus a little bit on that. So that's an article about you receiving uh, the medal from Jerry Solomon. Yeah. What year was that? Oh, okay, January of 1994, okay. So you had to wait until 94 to get there. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, when you got back to the States, um, how much longer were you in the service? Uh, let's see, I'll get back. I was in until April of 52. Mm -hmm. Where were you assigned you last... And, uh, About a year in the States. Well, I was discharged from Indiantown Gap, Pennsylvania, oh, yeah. but I was 
at uh, Fort George Meade, Maryland. It was just temporary. And then I, and I, uh, I got the, over there. I, uh, I told them I'd been to clerk type of school, so I ended up in a headquarters company working in the post office. <laughs> And that was your assignment until uh, you until were got, discharged? Yeah, until I got discharged. And that was April got, 52? Yeah, I got rid of the infantry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now I noticed that uh, you waited to get back to the States before you got malaria. How'd, you get, how'd that happen? Uh, I was home on a 30-day leave and I was home well, about 15 days and uh, my girlfriend, uh, uh, with my wife after, but we went to uh, my grandmother's in Burlington, Vermont, and uh, we went to movies and came back, and I started sweating and I started getting sick, and then after a while I went back to normal, the next day I was all right, and I came home, and on a Wednesday I had another one, my father called a doctor, it was Dr. Feingold, whatever, he was an army doctor in World War II, and he looked at me and he said he got malaria, so he wrote it all down. And I went. My father took me to uh, uh, Fort Devens the next day, I think it was. And I mean, I I was all right then. And then next morning I woke up and I was in the in the latrine, and the nurse hollered, "Is somebody sick in there?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, "You yes, ma'am, get back in bed." And they gave me medicine. And that was the last one I had. I was lucky, I guess. Hmm. So I just. I had three attacks, but that was mm -hmm. it. But Did you ever, after you were discharged, you ever use the GI Bill? No. No, never used it. Mm -hmm. Do you stay in contact with anyone that served with you? That's William Cole, I do. Yeah, just, that's, that's fairly right. recently, yeah. They're not, uh, they're not, uh, there's only probably a couple of other ones I know that were there. I mean, mm -hmm. there was, the rest of them are gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's not saying that they all got killed, but... Yeah, yeah. Well, in fact, it's cool. I mean, he keeps track of them. He goes to all the, the meetings and things they mm -hmm. have, but... Uh, have you ever been to any of the reunions? No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. no. Um, did you ever join any veterans organizations? Uh, I belonged to American Legion in Scottsdale, I think, for 10 years. And then I belonged to... Korean veteran in Glen Falls in 92, I think it was, mm -hmm. I joined. So do you think you're the Forgotten War? Yes, I do. Yeah, because I mean, here there's very little mm -hmm. stuff that's Korean yeah. stuff. Yeah. How do you think your time in Korea had an effect on your life? Well, it was a, an experience, that's for sure. It, uh, and uh, I had worked in a I worked in a paper mill before I went, and uh, and of course I still had the job when I come back. You know, so I went back there, and I worked there. 24 years, and they shut down, and I went to another paper mill, Hollingsworth and Wolves, and mm -hmm. I worked there 21 years, and I retired. I retired 14 years ago, day before yesterday, I think it was. <laughs> now, um, you have some photographs. Uh, if you hold it up like this, Eric can focus in on it, and tell us uh, when and where that was taken. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. Taken after I came back, it had to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have your because first calf patch on. Yeah, yeah okay. had, to, had to be. Yeah, if you hold it back a little bit, he can focus in yeah, on it. You can. Uh, yeah. You can see that and uh, make sure it's right in the middle. Okay, so that was taken probably in 52 or so? Yeah, uh, yeah, 52. Okay, here's Got it. Got it. another one. Yeah, this is a 38 parallel. 
Was that taken on the way up or the way back? <laughs> on the way up. Uh -huh. Yeah, look, look as Harry done that one. And this one's probably an, an earlier one, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, that third division back. Uh -huh. That was probably in 49. Okay. Um, do, you th do you have any other stories you want to add? or? Did you have any feelings either way when MacArthur was relieved of command? Did you no. ever think about that? Yeah, there was a... No, I really thought that he was doing a good job. But I never had... See, I saw General Ridgway after he took over. Mm -hmm. I never saw MacArthur. But, how did you feel about MacArthur and, and how did you feel about Ridgeway as generals? Do you have a feeling either way on that? Well, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, they were, you know, they were actually, as far as I was concerned, they were both good good men. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were good, good generals. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much for your interview. Yeah, I hope I done all right. No, you did. Yeah. Just, just leave it flat on the table. That'll do. Flat on the table. Okay. Now, where are you in that photograph? Right here. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very